The Kardashians are no strangers to lawsuits, and that trend is continuing this week after Chloe was hit with a lawsuit from her ex-assistant accusing her of many different things. We also have to talk about the new episode of The Kardashians and all the backlash it's getting, and some tea on Kourtney and her Lemmy vitamins. It's a mess, so let's get into it. It's no secret that the Kardashians have many, many assistants. If you've been following any of the Kardashian-Jenner sisters for a while now, then many of you probably know Alexa Oakley. Alexa has been working with the Kardashian family for a while now. She's listed as being the director of operations at Kardashian Communications, and she's Chloe's executive assistant. Chloe and Alexa seem to have a really good relationship too. Chloe attended her wedding, she always appeared in their old show, but it doesn't seem like Chloe has had the best relationship with all of her previous assistants. In February, one of Chloe's ex-assistants filed a lawsuit against her for wrongful termination along with a bunch of other workplace violations. Chloe Kardashian is being sued by her ex-household assistant. Chloe's former household assistant, Matthew Manhard, is now suing her and he says that working for her was a nightmare. Matthew Manhard worked for Chloe from 2019 to 2022 until he claims he suffered an injury to his leg, which forced him to take time off work. The lawsuit states when he returned to work after his injury healed, he was fired. Manhart alleges that he told Kardashian he was unable to work as a result of his injury sustained in May of 2022, but says when he returned to work six months later, his role was terminated. He's also alleging that his day would be filled with so many tasks that it made it impossible to take his breaks required by labor laws, and he didn't get his overtime pay, so now he wants to be compensated. A rep for Chloe spoke out against the lawsuit and said, Toward the end of his employment, he was on a leave of absence for an extended period of time and the role eventually needed to be replaced. We will not tolerate false accusations and will prove that this is a frivolous lawsuit. And after three months, we finally have a legal response from Chloe, and no surprise here, but she's denying her former assistant's claims. Chloe's lawyers filed a case management statement, which is just information that tells a court the progress of the case to either prepare for trial or whatever method they'll be using to resolve the lawsuit. Chloe denied all of Matthew's claims and said that she's willing to go through mediation to settle the lawsuit. A lot of people are saying that since Chloe is willing to go through mediation, it must mean there's some truth to his claims. We had people writing, I believe him. This is not the first time the sisters are involved with stuff like this. Mediation, yeah, I believe him. If this was frivolous, she wouldn't be willing to negotiate. I have no doubt that their assistants are overworked. Seems to be a theme for them not to pay staff. Shame with all that wealth. So we're just gonna have to wait and see how everything plays out, but something tells me if Chloe is willing to mediate with someone, then in my opinion, there must be some truth to those claims, because if there wasn't, she would be saying, no, I paid you everything that you're owed, and here's the proof of that. But we're just gonna have to wait and see how everything turns out. Moving on, let's talk about Courtney and her Lemmy gummies. A few months ago, we talked about Courtney's new vaginal health gummies called Lemmy Purr. Want a yummy? This is for you. Lemmy Purr is our vaginal health gummy with a clinically studied probiotic that is specifically made to target vaginal health. We named this gummy Lemmy Purr because dot dot dot. <laughs> Guess why? So Lemmy Purr tastes like so good. Tastes like a tropical pineapple vacation. We think you're deserves a little treat. In an Instagram post, Courtney announced them, writing, Your cat is going to love this. Meet Lemmy Purr, our new vaginal health gummy. Vaginal health is such an important part of women's overall well-being and not talked about enough, which is why we are so excited to launch this. Give your vagina the sweet treat it deserves and turn it into a sweet treat. You know what they say, you are what you eat. And right away, people were not loving this idea. Many people called it out for being a gimmick and making girls feel like they need yet another thing to be insecure about that can only be fixed by spending money. So many gynecologists came out and spoke out against the supplements. Do I think that you should buy a probiotic containing vaginal health gummy promoted by a celebrity to change the taste and the smell of your vagina? No. This is anti-feminist, this is the patriarchy in a pot. 
And during the Kardashians this week, we got a bit of a behind the scenes look at what Courtney was thinking when she made these vitamins. And judging by the scene they showed, I don't think she thought about it much at all. In the scene, Courtney is reading through a sheet that is presented to her by her team, outlining all the future plans for Lemmy and whatever is coming next. She then reads out vagina from the list, and it sounded like the first time she was ever even hearing about this idea. October, it's Focus Immunity gummies. Yep. And vagina. Vagina is big. Her business partner started to explain it to her, and he was like, yeah, vagina is big. It's the cleanest vagina ever. There's pineapple extract. It makes it taste sweet. And Courtney's sitting there like, oh my god, really? I mean, this scene is from May 2022, and the gummies came out in February. So you know they must have been pretty far along in the process of making them. I don't know why, but I thought Courtney would have a more hands-on approach with this. She's always been about health and wellness, and I know that she's not a doctor or anything, but it's just interesting to see that she's pretty much just the face of the brand. Her team works, they hand her a sheet of what's coming out, and all she has to do is okay it. At least, that's the vibe that I get from that scene. The next issue people are having with this episode has to do with the narrative about the show being boring and Kim giving us nothing. During episode two, Kim sat down with Chloe and Scott to talk about an article published by Variety last year calling the show a plot-free, work-obsessed season. It talked about how they didn't show us very much, they pick and choose what to show us, and even the bits they do show are heavily picked through and not true reality. The article said they still want our attention, but find themselves without things they're willing to say, saying it feels like a document of tight control with the manner in which the family sees itself. I think that's a perfect summary of what the show is. It was supposed to be a real look into their lives, but if anything, it's more scripted and planned than ever before. Kim didn't like this article and she went off on a rant but mainly focusing on Chloe. The bulk of this article was about how we don't get to see Kim or Kanye or her relationship with Pete and the whole breakup, but Kim is focused on what it said about Chloe. Kim reads out this part of the article, which says, the season's first episode was set closer to the present as Chloe reveals to the camera that she is imminently close to a baby via surrogate, a state of affairs she has been unwilling to discuss on camera throughout the process. Her right to privacy amid such an emotional personal journey is indeed her own, but it exists in a funny way in a series about opening up the family story to the world. The fact of such personal change happening entirely out of the camera's line of sight re-emphasizes what we see is what we are allowed to see and brings the mind to just how little of that there really is. And Kim was understandably upset because Chloe did share a lot. And I think even though they're reality TV stars, they do still have a right to privacy. And if Chloe didn't want to share her journey with surrogacy, then that's fine. Here's where people are having the real issue. Kim tried to say that her and Chloe are the only ones who give the show real content by sharing every last detail of their personal lives and people are strongly disagreeing with that statement. We've already seen from the season preview that Kim and Courtney have some kind of fallout during this season. Have you talked to Corp about Milan? My sister used my wedding as a business opportunity. She's mad at me. Livid. She felt like her wedding vibes were like stripped from her. I'm really confused how this narrative came into her head. Like I couldn't have been more mindful. I said, don't do anything that Courtney wore to her wedding. I see both sides. Yeah, I see both sides. People think that's a misunderstanding. It's not. It's who she is to her core. <sighs> and a lot of people are feeling like this is just her taking a shot at Courtney. One person tweeted, not Kim and Chloe talking about how they're the only ones who gave real content on the show when Courtney bled out for years showing her and Scott's relationship. And that's very true. During the early seasons of Keeping Up, we saw so much of Courtney and Scott and their whole relationship and their issues and family and kids. I'm sure that's a huge reason why Courtney is so overfilming and a lot of the time seems so disinterested in everything. Even the previous season of the Kardashians was so filled with Courtney and Travis to the point people were actually sick of it. If anything, it's Kendall and Kylie who aren't contributing anything, and I feel like that's who people want to see most. We got some pointless 10 minute clip of Kendall teaching Kylie how to drive manual last episode, and then a quick clip of Kylie going to her lab in Italy to see her makeup. I thought that we'd be seeing way more of them, 
but I get the feeling that they've made their money and they're just over it. I think Kim was mad at this article because it's filled with the truth and she doesn't want to hear it. Everyone fell in love with Keeping Up because it was funny and messy and felt a bit more real. It's understandable if they don't want to do that anymore and they want privacy, but then maybe a reality show isn't for them. Anyways guys, let me know what you think about everything down below. Are you guys also getting the feeling that this new show won't survive for many more seasons and everyone is clearly over it? Or do you think they're gonna keep it going for as long as possible, even if it continues to be labeled as boring? Let me know and I'll see you next time.